Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have Tamara from Mooley with us ready for another exciting class. Today we'll be making the reflected fringe hoop. My name is Lillian from Yarnspirations and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here and we'll be sure that Tamara answers them. Thanks Tamara. All right, thank you so much for having me. So today we're ma making the reflected fringe hoop. Harder to say than, I is to, than it is to make, I think. Um, to make this craft, it's a pretty simple craft. You just need one ball of Lily Sugar and Cream. Now, they used the Ecru in the pattern that you probably got when you signed up for the class. Uh, if not, though, I believe they'll be linking it in the chat if you weren't able to get a hold of your copy of this PDF yet. Um, but it takes just one ball of yarn. And like I say, they used Ecru in the picture, and that has a really kind of a boho, um, you know, that really trendy vibe right now. But you could use whatever color you want. I think pink would be really fun for a kid's room, especially a teen's room, um, you know, wherever. You could really use any color, basically, is what I'm saying. Stripes, whatever you want to use for this project. You don't have to use the color recommended unless you want to. You also, of course, need the hoop that you're going to be working the yarn around, that you're going to be tying it to. So it calls for a 10-inch hoop, which looks about like this. I did find this one at my local Michaels. Um, did have a little tag on it that I've torn off, but this one is a 10-inch hoop. I noticed, though, that there are several other sizes of hoops also available at Michaels. So if you can find the mirror to match your size of hoop, you can use really any size hoop you like. You can go teeny tiny. You can go great big. You can make this project any size you want. Just remember, if you use a bigger hoop, you might need a little bit more yarn in order to get all the way around it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in addition to the hoop and the yarn, you'll, of course, need a mirror. I've taped off most of this one here so I don't blind you all with the lights and things, but I'll take that little piece of paper off before we actually do any gluing. Again, this was also a 10-inch mirror that I also found at my local Michaels. Other supplies you'll need are a pair of scissors, of course, to cut the yarn, um, a glue gun or some sort of glue if you've got another glue you like to use. Um, I know e E6000 is a great kind of all-purpose craft glue if you don't want to use a hot glue, um, but some something to glue it all together at the end. And then optionally, they do also recommend spray starch and an iron. If you haven't used spray starch before, it's kind of, it's something you actually find in the laundry aisle, not necessarily in the craft aisle. This is the bottle I keep around here in my craft room. And it's a really handy thing to use with yarn if you haven't used it before. Now, a lot of times when we talk about yarn crafting, we talk about, you know, the yarn wants to be flowy and lay beautifully, but sometimes we want the yarn to be stiff and stay where it is. So if you look at that picture in your PDF, you can really see how those yarn strands are sticking straight out from the hoop. So using something like a spray starch and a hot iron, you just spray that yarn. Once you've got it all set in place, you'd want to protect your surface of your table, get it all set up the way you want it, spray it down and then use a hot iron to draw dry that starch the other tip though i would recommend is that you do it from the wrong side so you'd want to do it from the back of your project because sometimes it can leave just a little bit of residue especially when we want to make things really really stiff so that's just an optional thing you can do i'm not going to try and do this and iron on camera i think that would be really messy and difficult to try and get it all on camera today but um, that is an option if it's something you want to do to your hoop when it's all done so I'm going to go ahead and set that out of the way here. Um, the other supplies that they do recommend here, you're going to need um, a ruler or tape measure or something that helps you measure six inches. Um, and then in the picture on the PDF, they're using a crochet hook to pull those strands through and make those knots, um, just like this one. But you don't have to use a crochet hook. You can absolutely do this with your fingers. In fact, I tried it both ways um, when I was getting ready for this class, and I actually prefer doing it with my fingers, even though I'm a professional crocheter. So you can do it however works best for you. Now, the other thing I'm going to recommend, and this is not on the project list, but I thought of this literally just minutes before class started, kind of a, ooh, it was such a good, you know, like a V8 moment, if anybody else remembers those. Um, we're going to be cutting a lot of pieces of yarn all to be about six inches long. So if you have a six inch long piece of cardboard, I'm going to show you how to use this to wrap the yarn around it so we can cut a whole bunch of strands of the yarn all at once, rather than measuring them out and cutting one by one by one. Because we're going to need a lot of those strings to get around this hoop. Now, I don't know exactly how many, so you'll want to cut a little pile of them, set them aside, add them to your hoop, and then cut another little pile and add them to your hoop, going back and forth so you don't end up with a whole bunch of six-inch six long strings that you don't have anything to do with, right? So with all that said, Let's go ahead and co I'll bring in the hand camera here so we can get an overhead look at what we're doing. All right, great. 
Now, before I get started demonstrating anything else, are there any questions anybody had about any of these supplies? I did see one just pop up, six inch by how long cardboard? The six inches right here is for this one is the important part. However wide, this was just literally a flap I cut off a box. Six inches is, like I say, six inches long is the important part because we want six inch lengths of yarn. But the width is just whatever you happen to have on your cardboard piece. Lillian, was there anything else I could answer? That's all so far, but if anyone has any questions, pop them into the chat. Okay, I'm, you were cutting out a little bit there, but I think you said not too many questions. Okay, good. I just wanted to double check the chat myself. Sorry about that. That's all right. All right, great. So we've got our hoop, but for now we can set the hoop aside along with our mirror, and we need to cut some of these strands of yarn. So the first thing I did before I thought of the trick with the cardboard was I took some tape I have that actually has the measurements right on it. This is just a cool type of uh, masking tape that I happen to have. So if uh, you, you know, you don't have to have this kind of masking tape, you could measure out six inches of tape and put it on your table or your work surface, or you could just use a ruler or, uh, you know, whatever, a yardstick, whatever you've got handy. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just like having them stuck there. So first I'll show you how I used this one. So this is an option for cutting your strings because again, you're going to be doing a lot of them. So I just did that and then I can lay it right out and then cut that string. Now it doesn't have to be exactly six inches. We want six inches uh, for it's going to make it easier to attach to the hoop, but we do trim off those strings at the end too to make them really even. So if you don't get exactly six, six inches, that's fine. If you're going to err, I'd say err on the side of making it a little bit too long because you can always cut off a little bit more, but of course it's a lot harder to put it back on. So that's one way to cut it. And I did manage to cut quite a few of them that way. You can see here, this is my little pile. They aren't all perfectly even. Like I say, we're gonna trim that off at the end. It's just a little pile of six inch approximately strands. The other method that I like to do when I'm cutting lots of strings like this is more often than not, I will take the cut string or one of the most recent ones, just pair it up end to end with the next one, run down the length and cut it off. And this would be another good way possibly to do this one if you like to do uh, attach them to the hoop sort of one knot at a time. We'll be doing groups of six. So this can be a great way to put together that group of six. And then you can make little piles of groups of six if you like, however you like to do it. So then the other way, go ahead and show you with the cardboard here. Like I say, literally minutes before we started this class, I cut this flap off a box that was sitting nearby, measured it out, just happened to be nearly exactly six inches long the width i let's see i don't even know what it is it's three inches just what the flap happened to be widthwise so if i'm going to use this to wind my yarn i can do quite a few of them at once the trick though is you know cardboard even though it's card corrugated cardboard it can still bend so we don't want to do this super tightly we need to go kind of loosely around the cardboard not super loose but we don't want to do it so tight that it that it pulls and bends that cardboard because then our strands are going to end up shorter so with this method, once you get going, I've just lined up one end there right at the bottom, so it's the right length. And then you can just go and go and go right around your cardboard. In fact, I ran out of yarn already and I'd already pulled quite a bit up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this yarn down in my lap so it rolls a little easier here. But you can see I'm just going around and around the cardboard here. Not so tight that it bends the cardboard, just tight enough that I you know that it's not falling off basically and then when you've decided okay that's starting to pile up that's enough for now then i would go ahead and cut that one again right at that end because this is the length we want this whole length and then you can carefully cut along each of these edges so you can try and slide your scissors in there let me try this with a slightly longer pair of scissors here that i happen to have here nearby and just slide that right underneath all those strands and see if I can just cut through all of them at once. Good sharp scissors are definitely a key. There we go. There's one. And I can just flip that over, make sure they're still lined up there at the bottom and cut right on the other end. There we go. So a little, definitely want sharper scissors than the ones I happen to bring to the party today, but 
that is another option. And then we've got all those strings cut all at once. So I think this is probably the fastest method, um, but you know, you can do whichever one makes you happy. So were there any questions on any of that? We're all following along. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna set that yarn aside here and bring in our hoop. And now it is time to attach our yarn to the hoop. So what we wanna do, if we look at the instructions, it says take six strands of yarn together, fold in half and knot into fringe around the hoop. So this is a pretty simple fringe technique. It's probably my favorite. So I've got three, four, five, and six. There we are. If you've done any macrame before, you may be familiar with this knot as well. Um, it was also very popular for a while there when everybody was adding crochet braids to the sides of their, or rather yarn braids to the sides of their crochet beanies and hats with those ear flaps a few years ago. So this may be a knot that you have used before. So I'm just lining up my six strands here so they're nice and even. You know, they're not perfect, but they're close and that's good enough for me. And then we're just going to fold it in half, bring those ends together. So now we've got that halfway point. We've folded our yarn. This is the part I'm going to try and do it without making too much of a racket, bumping the uh, hook on the table here. But I'm just going to lay the loops right over the hook. See right there's the fold. And I'm going to reach in through that little fold there and grab those ends of yarn. So I'm going to use my other hand here. Oops, I dropped it trying to flip it over. Let's try that again. And it's okay if you're, you know, this is a really kind of a fiddly thing until you get used to the motion of it. So if it, you know, falls, falls out of your hands, don't worry about it. Just start again, get them lined up. We get our fingers right through that little loop there. Reach around, grab. There we go. Now I can turn it over. You can see how I've got those yarn ends all pinched together there in my fingers. I'm just going to bring them right through that loop and pull and give it a really strong tug. These are really strong metal hoops. Um, they had both brass ones. These were the, this was the brass one and they also had some chrome ones at Michael's. So you can definitely pick your favorite color. You don't have to use the brass. You can use whatever hoop color you like, but they aren't gonna break. So you can go ahead and just really, you wanna tug down on those yarn bits as hard as you can. So if I turn it back over here, you can see that loop has made that little almost like a knot right there in front of our yarn strands and they're all stuck to our hoop now. And that's really all there is to it. Now, if we look at, and I'll do it again, don't worry, I will definitely be doing that quite a few more times. So if we come back over here to our PDF, I'm gonna see if I can get it to focus a little bit here on our overhead or hand camera. We can see that along the mirror edge here, that's where we see those little knots right there. So the side that those are on is going to be your front. And if we turn it over again, so we can take another look, you can see here how you can see the split where they're coming out, that will be the back of the hoop. So one thing you want to watch is to make sure that as you add these knots to your hoop, they are going to do it all from the same side of the hoop. Otherwise, that little bar there from the knot will end up on opposite sides and it just won't, it won't look the way it's meant to look. Now that said, if you like the way the other side looks better, it's your project. You can absolutely flip that around and make that the front if you like. You just want to be consistent as you go around so that, you know, so you've got, so that it makes sense. So you don't have just one knot with the wrong foot, with the wrong side facing there sticking out. So let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll set those out of the way there. And once again, I just want to line up those ends. Fold them in half. I'm going to lay that right over the hoop here. It's a little big to get it all on camera, but you can see this is on the inside of the hoop and that's on the outside of the hoop, the ends on the outside. So then I just reach with my fingers, two fingers so I can pinch right through that hole until I can grab those ends. And I really use my other hand to get those ends between those fingers. It takes both hands. Then I pull through. And again, give it a really good tug. Now you'll see as I was doing this one, this one flipped, it's not a big deal. Once it's all glued together, that will help hold those in place. So don't let that freak you out. Just go ahead, if you're checking to make sure you're on the right side and pull those to the outside. So then I'm going to go ahead and squish those together. And we've got our first two done. So if you look at your picture on your PDF, you should see 
just how well this is coming together. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to get six more strands here and we'll try and do it with a crochet hook for those who wanted to try it that way. Um, as I said, even as a crocheter, I found it easier to use my fingers, but different people certainly like to do things different ways. And that's the joy of crafts. We all get to do it in the way that feels most comfortable for us. So I've got my next six here. I'm going to go ahead and start the same way. I'm just going to lay it right over. And now I'm going to pick up my crochet hook. And I picked a, if you are a crocheter, you can see I picked a bigger hook because I want a lot of space here in the throat to be able, let me see if I can get that to, oop, there we go. I want a lot of space there in the throat to be able to grab basically 12 strands of yarn since we're grabbing both ends of six strands. So I'm just going to, let me do that again. I'm going to stick my hook right through that hole, the same place I put my fingers. And then what I'm going to try and do is use my hook to grab all that yarn and pull it back through. So I think there's honestly 12 is too much even for this hook. So I'm going to have to kind of urge it through. And here we are in the end, use my fingers anyway. And you can see here, a couple of them didn't go. So this is something that can happen. Like I say, the crochet hook one isn't for me. That's how you do it basically. But I find it more difficult than my fingers. If you do make a mistake like this, it's not a big deal. All we need to do is pull those strands back off. If you have gone ahead and pulled it tight and you've realized it's facing the wrong direction, you can still pull it off. But do not panic. Do not worry. I would recommend either using your nails or you could use something like a, a needle or something basically pokey. You can get right under there. Let me bring this up a little closer to the camera. You can get right under that little knot right there and just start pulling until you loosen that knot right up. Then you can pull those strands through and you haven't even lost the yarn. So if you, yeah, and now, now I'm going to have to redo that one, but it's not a big deal. I can reuse this. Um, so, you know, if you've put one on the wrong way, don't worry about it until you've glued them down. You can always pull those back off and reapply them. So we'll go ahead and redo this one. I'm just going to fold it in half again, lay it right over the hoop, reach right in there and give it a pinch and I've got all those ends and pull through and I tend to work right to left but you can go left to right however you like to do it whatever is easiest for you right-handed left-handed whatever makes you comfortable the main thing is you really just want to pull those knots down as hard as you can before you go on to the next one so now I've got these six lined up for my my attempt with the crochet hook and we'll do these next fold them again in half Lay it right over the hoop, reach right into that loop, grab those ends, and pull them on up and through. There we are. So if you've got, this is another tip, if you find that like one of these strands isn't pulling down, it's just sticking up funny from the others, then you can go through and really kind of pull the different strands individually. And that will help, help you find the outlier, the one that doesn't want to join the others in the fun. There we go. So that's another good tug. Now we've got three of them on there and we just keep going and filling up our hoop. So while I do that, um, I would love to hear if you have any questions about this. Um, if you have any other ideas or ways you could use it, I was thinking one fun thing I found is um, when I was looking for the 10 inch mirrors, I actually found some teeny tiny one inch mirrors as well. And I was thinking how fun would this be? as a really small craft, make, make it just teeny tiny and uh, hang them on the tree as Christmas decorations or holiday decorations, or even in the windows to catch that sparkle with those tiny little mirrors. Um, you could have a lot of fun. The one supply that's listed on the uh, supply list that I wasn't actually able to find was one inch uh, metal rings. It is, um, I have a solution for you though that I will be showing you here shortly. But if you can find those one inch metal rings or use a substitute, then you could absolutely, like I say, go down to as small as those little one inch mirrors and make some really, really sparkly decorations. I love that idea. So if you guys have some ideas or places or rooms that you think this craft would be perfect for, please do share those in the comments. So Lillian, were there any questions I could answer? We don't have any questions yet. Okay, it is a pretty simple craft, so, <laughs> but if you have questions, please do ask. Sometimes, um, you know, I do this all the time, so if there, there might be something I'm sort of skipping over or assuming that you know, if you don't know, please do ask. 
So I've got my next six here. Like I say, I just like to line them up as best I can on the ends. Sometimes as you pick them up, they get a little off, but that's okay. That's the other thing. If you look at the picture in the PDF, you can really see how we're going to be trimming that down quite a bit to make it even. Um, so we're, don't worry too much, too, too much about making them exactly, you know, exactly six inches, exactly the same. There we are. So that's our next one. All right. And the other thing you can do is tell us where you're tuning in from today. We always like to see where people are watching from. Always get a really good variety. And we appreciate you being here too. I know it's, um, if you're watching live, it's it might be dinner time for you. So thank you for joining us today. There we are. It's a great way to sort of wrap up the day with some crafts, right? So I see Texas and New York and Long Island, Fort Collins, Colorado. I love that city. It's so beautiful, Gail. Ah, thank you. I'm glad you guys like the idea. Alabama, Virginia, so many awesome places. There we are. Ready for our next one? Maybe I'll try one more with a crochet hook. Maybe the crochet hook, for whatever reason, takes a little bit more practice than the fingers. Ooh, and the UP of Michigan. Hello, hello. The UP has some of the fun, uh, funnest place names, I find. I always like saying... The place names from up there. I'm not going to try and do it now live, but <laughs> in private, I really enjoy trying to say those. Sometimes they're some really fun tongue twisters. There we are. I always like to, when I'm making fringe, I find myself, I'm always sort of combing it out with my nails like this and just sort of admiring it and loving the look of it. There we are. So yeah, this, this hot pink color, besides being a lot easier to see on a white table here for demo demonstration purposes, I think is a lot of fun. But there are so many options. Um, another idea I had for this project would be, um, and it's the wrong time of year for this one, but uh, a, ch a teen's locker at school, I think. You know, if you got a real kind of a four or five inch one. I know when I was in high school, I really loved having a mirror in my locker. And I think this sort of craft would be so fun, you know, for that sort of, for that sort of thing. I know I would have absolutely loved that when I was a teen. So we got our next one. And, you know, and if you find it's easier, if you have trouble putting them right next to each other, you can come over a little bit and then just scooch it. Here we are. And I wanted to say, too, if you want to practice this and you've got the yarn, but you don't have the hoop or you can't get to the store to get one. Another thing I thought about, um, go a little bit green with it. And uh, you could absolutely take like a like the lid from you know, like a cottage cheese or a yogurt, sort of that sort of size, and just cut down, cut out the center, and then you'd have that plastic ring. And then you could do that right on the plastic ring as well. And then you could, you know, have, you know, like I say, you'd be recycling at the same time. And, you know, the, you're only limited by the, by the uh, size of ring you can find. There we are. So there's that one. And of course, the mirror as well is optional. I did see somebody ask, could you paint the mirror? I think that's a great idea. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, another thing I believe you can pick up at Michael's is glass etching cream. And I believe, I believe that also works on mirrors. You'd want to read the instructions, read the, read the bottle. But I've used that before on glass and things. And um, I think that would be really fun because basically the way that works, well, I'm not going to bring in the mirror because that's not going to work right here on camera. But uh, the way the glass etching cream works is you put down a stencil and then it basically etches the glass chemically. You rinse it off, pull off the stencil, and you've got that. So you could stencil on the mirror. Um, you could, of course, then use glass if you wanted to instead of a mirror. Whatever you, know, you want to fill that up with or leave it empty, just hang it on a wall empty. I think in a variety of colors, that could be really sophisticated as well. You can definitely get creative with it. Lillian, what other ideas? I saw a few things pop up, but they fly by a little too fast for me to try and read and demo at the same time. Yeah, um, Gail suggested um, that it would make a really fun supply kit uh, for a preteen or a teenage girl. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she also said it reminds uh, her of when she makes uh, fringes for scarves. Yes, absolutely. Yes, this is a very, you know, I think, um, I think in macrame they call it the lark's foot knot. It's a really common macrame, you know, technique as well, besides knotting the strings together. 
you'll find this gets used quite a bit as well, especially when you're starting the project. At least in my relatively limited macrame experience. I've only done a few things. But I know that is really popular right now too. When I was in Michael's just the other day, I saw several end caps with macrame supplies that were clearly very popular. So lots of fun stuff. I um if you go to go to Michael's looking for these to find the hoop. Um I'm trying to remember where I found the hoop. I know I found the mirror over in General Crafts. And I believe the hoop was more towards the center of the store where it's kind of well, depending on your Michaels, I know mine has kind of like the different stuff in there, like the baskets and sometimes the seasonal stuff. And that is currently where I found these hoops. Other times I have found them, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> other times I have found hoops like this near the uh, leather supplies or near leather cording. They seem to also be there sometimes. So if you're having trouble finding those in your stores. So we'll add another one here. You can see it doesn't. It's not super fast, but it doesn't take too long. If I weren't doing so much chatting, I'm sure I'd be quicker. But I don't know that we'll get all the way around the mirror here in our hour, but we'll get as far as we get, and I'll be able to demo the rest here. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and turn on my hot glue gun, though, just so we can get that going. There we are. There's the next one. All righty. So there's four and five and six. And that's another thing too, I wanna say, um, as you can see here, we're using groups of six. That's what the instructions say to do, but there's no reason, <clears throat> excuse me, that you couldn't do this with fewer strands. Um, more strands might actually get it to be a little bit difficult, but if you wanted a finer, less chunky look, you could absolutely do fewer strands in each one of these knots as well. And here we are. So our next one. And we're just going to keep on going around. Was there anything else I could answer in the chat? We don't have any new questions, but okay. I'm very curious to hear what colors people would choose. Yeah, absolutely. I, so many well, colors and leisure yes. and cream. So it's the perfect yarn for this because it's it's you know it's easy to find, it's easy to use. It's not fussy and it comes in so many colors. I have quite a few on my shelves and I was thinking how fun would this also be in a denim? Um, there's some Lily Sugar and Cream denim colors that are really lovely. Now, I'm, now instead of making it, I'm looking, turning around and looking at all my Lily Sugar and Cream and trying to look at all my colors. But there's even some that have um, different scrubby textures you could mix in too. Really Ooh. have some fun with it. That would be cool. Like all in like naturals and neutrals, but all different textures of yarn. That yeah, would that would be really cool. I have my heart seat on an ombre one where it like fades through different oh, colors. That would be beautiful. Yeah, this would also be great for, um, you know, a stash. If you are a crocheter or a knitter or a crafter who has a bunch of little balls of yarn around, um, all those little leftover ends, you know, you never want to get rid of. You do a stash busting one of these. That would be really cool, too. All your favorite colors from the year. Oh, it's actually quite a fun way to celebrate your projects, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, there's a question here from Marian. She asks, how many strands does an average hoop take? That is an absolutely fantastic question. Let's see if it's 14. Well, it's 14 inches wide. This is, might be too much math for me to actually figure it out. But let's see if we can give you an estimate now that we've got a few of them on here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 knots. And I am literally going to just kind of guesstimate here. We've got one, two, looks like we're gonna have four sections. We're about a quarter of the way done. So four times 14 would be too difficult for me to try and do in my head on camera live because <laughs> my brain says, ah, math and panics. So let me grab a piece of paper and a pencil here. 14 times four. Where are people in the chat? Usually 56. we have mathematicians in there. Usually you guys jump in with the math. So 14 times 4 is, I believe, 56. I'm going to hope it's 56. Thank yeah. you. Thank you we for confirming that. <laughs> so then 56 times 6. So we need, because we have six strands in each one of those. And if you, of course, if you use less strands, it wouldn't cover as much space. So you need more of them. So our really gross estimate here is going to be 336. But... Again, that is, you know, that's just an estimate. So if, um, you know, you might need a few more, you might need a few less, but that'll get you close. 
uh, it's a lot certainly to try and do, you know, before you start tying them on. I would worry about them getting tangled up on each other, but maybe that's just me. So there's three, four, five, six. And it does say uh, that it takes one ball, but I am a quarter of the way around this hoop. And this is the ball I've been using. This is the, the one with still with the label on it here. So if you're not familiar with Lily Sugar and Cream, that's what you're looking for. I'm going to say I've used maybe a quarter of it. So I think it will use most of the ball. Um, but again, it does only take one ball for the 10 inch size. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I was in Michael's, the other hoop sizes I saw were, I believe, 14 and I want to say 19 inches or something close to that. So if you wanted to bump up to the, one of those bigger sized hoops, you could absolutely do it. You would just want to, you know, get an extra ball or two of this yarn. But then if you're getting two or three balls anyway, that would be a great opportunity, like we were talking, to really mix up those textures. You know, or try different colors or create your own rainbow or really coordinate this to the personality, to the person, to the room. It's a it's a great gift. It's a great activity to make with your kids. I think um, I think that, you know, kids and teens, older kids and teens would have a lot of fun making this right alongside you. And I'm sorry, I didn't see the end of Debbie's question. I could only read the first half before. She asked um, disappeared. I, yeah. <laughs> she asked, I missed the very beginning. I saw where you started to cut the yarn with the scissors. How many times did you put the yarn around the cardboard? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> theoretically 336. No, I'm just kidding. Um, basically until it uh, just seemed like it might start trying to bend the cardboard or maybe where the when you once you start wrapping those layers on top of each other, you're actually making them each just a little bit longer because the cardboard almost like it's becoming thicker because you're working over those other strands. So I didn't really count out how many times I did it. I just did it till it looked like a good amount, you know, that it was getting a little heavy on the cardboard. And then I went ahead and cut it. I didn't, I did not um, do a specific number of wraps. If I were making something like a pom-pom or a tassel, which is something that people use those cardboard pieces to make a lot, then, and I wanted matching pom-poms and tassels, you know, two or more of, um, then I would have counted for sure. But since it's just, oops, that's already six. Since uh, since we're going to need so many of these, I would not recommend wrapping it 336 times. Definitely do it in batches. Because then you're going to have some really long yarn strands on the outside, unless you've got a really big piece of cardboard. Here we are. Okay, pull that one down and move it on down. Two, three, four, five and six now the other thing i wanted to talk about with this craft we haven't gotten there quite yet but is um the glue gun i talked a little bit about you don't have to use a hot glue gun you could use something like e6000 which is available over with the other glues and adhesives um or you know whatever whatever other glue you have that's going to basically stick to both yarn and a mirror surface um but if you are going to use a hot glue or any glue you want to perhaps give a moment's thought to making sure that it's a clear drying glue. Um, because even though we're going to be gluing from the back of our project, sometimes, especially with hot glue, it really likes to drip. Um, I think anybody who crafts regularly with hot glue knows what I'm talking about. It seems like you always get a little bit stuck to your fingers as well. Um, hopefully I won't glue myself to the project tonight, but it's been known to happen. So if, um, so like I say, just keep an eye out for a clear glue. Um, that's always a good idea to craft with because it's E6000 is clear, um, except for they do have one that is black. So you'll want to read those labels carefully. But, um, you know, just use something, like I say, so that your, your glue doesn't throw sh show through and end up ruining it at the end. The glue gun I have, I actually, this is just coincidence. When I was going through stuff today, I realized, um, Actually, I have some pink glue for, so this one isn't clear, but you can sometimes get colored glues as well. So that's something to think about if you are picking up glue specifically for this project, either to get clear or if you can match it to your yarn color. That was literally just coincidence. I did not plan <laughs> having matching glue. It just happened to work out when I went to my, my glue drawer. So there we are. So yeah, this one goes pretty quick. I think this would also be a really fun craft idea um, for like a Girl Scout troop or, you know, anything where you've got some kids and they need to, you know, make something. Um, it might also, depending on the group, um, work well in, 
you know, retirement homes and things like that. I know my grandma did a lot of crafting in, in hers. And I think, you know, we want to work on manual dexterity which I seem to be missing today. There we go. There, <laughs> Got to get that one straightened out. There we go. You just get those straightened out. Sometimes they want to go a little crazy. I've actually almost gone all the way through the strands of yarn that I pre-cut for this before we started, as well as the ones I've made since. Now, if you find that as you're pulling it through, like I said, some of these are a little short and they're too short for what you want for your final length, then I would go ahead and use my uh, yarn needle to pull that out but make sure you give it a tug too. It might just be one that's caught down a little bit. Really pull through those individual strands if you need to, to get, there's one that doesn't seem to want to come up. There it goes. That was the one, the telltale short guy. There we go. And as you go to, if you find that your knots are loosening up, very normal, you definitely want to give them all a good strong pull before you do any gluing. There we are. So we'll do a few more of these before we talk about how to finish up the project. Were there any other ideas or questions? We don't have any questions yet, but I'm yeah. curious to see what does it, what does it look like on the other side with the knots? Ah, well, let me put, now that I've got these lined up, let me get this one on here and we'll turn it over. All right, let's see. Give that one a good pull. There we go. See, I'll turn it over here without hitting the table 15 times if I can. So there we go. This is what it looks like on the other side. So like I say, if you like the look of this side better, you can absolutely make this one your right side. It's genuinely, you know, it's your craft. You make it the way you want. Mix up the colors, choose the side that you want to make right. If you like both sides, you could even make a pattern with it. Go every other one, flip your hook over, you know, do one this way and then the next one from the other side. You could really have a lot of fun customizing this one however you like. I know it's hard to come up with the questions for this one, but if you have any, please do ask them. Like I say, we just wanna make, make sure as we add them, even if we add them over here, you know, just for the space and ease of working to the hoop, as you work them up, just make sure and push them together. You really want to fill in that hoop so you don't have any gaps where the ring itself is showing through. Unless, of course, that's the look you're going for. Because, again, it's your craft. You can do it your way. So there's three, four, five. And, oh, my gosh, would you believe it? I actually somehow cut exactly a multiple of six. I didn't count, I promise. <laughs> but that is a minor miracle, I think. So there we go. I'm going to do our last little bunch right here. Oop, and that little end is trying to get away from me. Get a better grip on that guy. There we are. I just had an idea mm. to combine Mariam's idea earlier about painting on the mirror. Like how cool would this look as like a lion or. Ooh, yes. I love that. Oh my gosh. That would be really cool. You could really bring so many other crafts <gasps> into this. Oh, you could just do um, like what you have there and then do like faces. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my gosh. That would be a really fun kids craft. Mm. Yes. I was thinking, too, for those who do crochet or knit, um, I know mandala making can be a thing people like to make and attach their hoops. This might be a really beautiful way to finish that off as well. So that is another option there, too. So I am out of little yarn strands. So I think, let's see, we've got 20 minutes left. So this might be a good spot to go ahead and just kind of pretend that we've gone all the way around. But you would want to go ahead, well, depending, <laughs> depending on if you're making it according to the instructions, you would want to go ahead and fill up that whole hoop with our little bits here. So then what the next step is, come back to our instructions here. It says trim fringe evenly. So this is going to be a little bit trickier because we want to basically give our fringe a haircut. And different people, you know, it's kind of, it's like cutting the bangs on your own head, right? Um, you can feel confident and sometimes you pull it off and then sometimes it doesn't always go the way you want it to. So what I'm going to recommend is before you start trimming, take your time and really pull all those little fringes towards the outside. Make sure they're nice and tight. You know, you don't want one to be loose and then you trim it off and then you, you know, pull it and it suddenly it's quite a bit longer than the others, although better than too short because you can always come back and trim again. So make sure you give each one of those knots a really good tug 
and that you comb through those fringes that they're laying nice and flat. Let's see, there's one that doesn't wanna be there, so doesn't wanna lay flat, I should say. There we are. Okay, so once you've got them all laid flat like that, then, yes, I'm just checking the instructions. Yes, then it would be time to trim. So ideally, if you have something larger, like a large plate that you can lay over this edging, you can use that as a guideline. Otherwise, you take, take your time and start at one end and start trimming. Um, another way you could do it, I'm trying to see what I have handy. And unfortunately, I didn't think of it until a little bit later. So unfortunately, I don't have anything. I'm trying to, anything near me that would be work for this. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe I'll use this as an example. We're going to pretend that this is the length right here that I want my trim to be. And you could move that along as well sort of line it up, perhaps even with a tape measure and really measure out each one of those little fringes and trim it off to the same length. So let's go ahead and say, that's about where we want ours to be. And I am just going to, with my sharpest scissors, start trimming those off. And again, this doesn't have to be picture, perfect, perfect, perfect. If you look at the PDF, you can see there's a few that are a little bit longer and shorter than the others, and that's okay. If you, like I say, if you want it to be, if you are one of those people, you need it to be absolutely perfect, then I would recommend finding a larger plate or something that you can lay over the top. And then you could use something like a rotary cutter to cut it right around that plate. Just make sure you get all those fringes nice and flat before you put that plate or whatever it is on top. So if you guys have any other ideas for cutting fringe, I'll be honest, this is one of the things I personally do struggle with a little bit sometimes. Um, when I was younger, I actually wanted to be a hairdresser, and I think there are probably quite a few heads that are happy I did not become one. <laughs> but we're just gonna take our time and cut. There's a question here from Mariam asking, can you put scotch tape on the top to hold it in place? I think you could, and I've tried that before um, with fringe. It didn't work out very well for me, but other people I know do swear by it. So, yeah, some people will put scotch tape on it um, or even sandwich it in the tape and then cut through the tape. Whatever works for you. If you've got a trick that works for you, absolutely use it. And if you've got, that's a great one. So if anybody else has any tips for that, please do share those as well. Sharing those tips is one of the best way. I learn new things a lot of times for your comments in these classes. I'm always taking new tricks home for myself as well. So I would love to hear any other ideas you have on trimming yarn. Um, I tend to, for me, use the rotary cutter method. You can pick up rotary cutters and rotary cutting mats at Michael's as well, usually over in the sewing section. They work just as well on yarn. So a lot of times when I have a fringe or tassels or a trim where it is really important to me, like on a scarf, that they stay really, really even, then that's how I will do it. I will actually smash it with my hand down on the cutting mat and then and use a, uh, a straight edge for a straight edge. For this, of course, we wanna curve, so. I'm gonna get just a little bit further around. It's not perfect. I'm okay with it. You can get in there and cut each individual, individual strand the exact length if you want to. You can go a little bit crazy. You can make it however you'd like it to be. I, I do recommend though, if you are freehanding it like I am here, that you start a little longer than you think it might wanna be because just like hair, you can always take more off. And of course, you know, if you do make a mistake, you cut one way too short and you say, oh my gosh, that's terrible. It's not a big deal. Again, we can always come back and grab that yarn needle, loosen up that knot, and just replace that little section and fix it. Nobody ever has to know. All right, were there any other ideas on how to trim that fringe? Because I am all ears. Uh, nothing yet, but I'll let you know. Okay, <laughs> all righty. Okay, so we've, we're gonna say that's all beautifully trimmed all the way around. Work with me. <laughs> and then we're gonna come back to the instructions. And this is the point where you would go ahead and apply that spray starch and iron if that's what you wanted to do. So we're gonna keep working, you know, just with the written instructions and say, this is our front. So what I would do is, as I say, I would put down something to protect the table, um, first and foremost, and then I would spray the starch on. Um, it is an aerosol spray, typically, and I would do that from the back. So before you spray it, 
go ahead, turn it over to the back and really, really, really take your time getting all those fringe pieces exactly how you want them to be. Then you can spray it down and then you can iron those in place. If you've lined your table with, you know, you want to either spray it on a surface that you can also iron or move it to your ironing board. I don't want you to don't want you to cause a fire with this project. But then you would just sort of place your iron down on each of those sections. And what that will do, it'll sort of speed dry that spray starch. And you'll be amazed how really great this works for stiffening yarn. That's another great tip if you do, like I say, anything else with yarn and you want it to really be stiff like this, whether it's fringe or um, a Christmas ornament. When I make uh, snowflakes in crochet thread, I will use spray starch to make those nice and stiff so that they stand up beautifully on the tree. Um, it can be, it's one of those little things you can have in your crafting toolbox from the yarn, uh, laundry aisle that turn out to be uh, handy more often than you might think. So after you have, let me come back to our instructions here. After you have applied your spray starch and ironed them if you want to, or you can leave them, leave them nice and flappy if you want to too, then what we're going to want to do is add the uh, hanging ring. Now I mentioned this was the one ring I couldn't find in the store. They may have been there, but our store happened to be real busy, so I didn't want to pull anybody out for that. So what I found instead were these uh, key rings, actually. Oh, these are for making basically keychains, uh, split ring, key ring. So you might even have one of these laying around the house. You're like, where did this come from? But you don't want to throw it away. Go ahead and pull it out for this craft. It's also a good size if you can find tiny little mirrors. These are the little one inch mirrors that I found. So this one's a little bit bigger than one inch, but if you can find one inch rings, you can make teeny tiny little ones of these crafts too. I had to buy those little mirrors, they're just so cute. So whatever you have, basically, if it's a ring or a hook, what we wanna do is we wanna attach something to our hoop so that we can hang it up when it's all done. So for this part, let me get our instructions back here so I can read them. What we're going to do is we are going to use a strand of yarn to securely fasten the one inch metal ring to the top of the hoop on the wrong side, hiding it behind the fringe. So again, you want this fringe to be a little bit stiff here before we do this part, but I'm just going to take a length of yarn here. It's about, well, we've got a measure. I can tell you exactly. It's about 12 inches long or so. Doesn't really matter as long as it's long enough to work with. And then we're on the wrong side of our hoop right now. Once again, we can tell that because we are looking at the knots and they don't have that little bar across the front. This is the front and that's the back. So what we want to do is basically tie this loop right on to the back of our hoop. So um, I think that tying it is probably more secure than glue, but I think that if you um, maybe added a little dab of glue too, that would not, that would not go amiss. So you can see I've just looped my string right through that ring here. There's not really specific instructions on how to do this. It just says securely fasten. So I'm going to use my favorite knot because I find that this knot is the easiest and most secure one. Combines my two favorite things, easy and secure. So I'm going to start basically the same way I would if I were tying my shoes. You just wind that one around. I don't know knot nomenclature, so sorry about that but just like a regular knot, but then I send that end through again so that it's gone through twice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down. And I find that when I basically go the, send the yarn through the hole twice before I pull down on the sides, again, I don't, I'm not a professional knot tire, unfortunately, so I don't know the words, but um, that tends to make a knot that stays together really well. You know, when you tie that regular knot, it tends to want to pull open. I find that if I do it twice, it makes it quite a bit more secure. So right now it's pointing down and I'm going to flip that up, but right now I just want to get it nice and tight. There we are. So then to make it really secure, of course, one knot's not going to do it. We want to do the same thing again. So I'm going to try and turn it here, see if I can take advantage of the fact that we haven't spray starched so you can see this against the white background a little easier. So like I say, it's basically the same as tying your shoes. We take one string, go over, under, and then just do it again. Send it right back through there before you pull down. And I find that this knot nine times out of 10 is really, really, ooh, really quite secure as long as you don't pull so hard that you break the yarn, whoops. All right, well, if that happens, not a big deal. Didn't know my own strength today. Then we can just trim that right off and try again. 
That is one thing I will say about this yarn. If you pull too hard on this yarn, you can break it because it is 100% cotton. So if you wanted to feel really, really secure, if you, especially if you had a bigger one, I might recommend instead of using the Lily Sugar and Cream to tie this ring on, you might want to use um, something a little bit stronger. Maybe not something that's 100% cotton, perhaps even a thread. Like I say, we want to glue it at the end too, but um, just to make absolutely sure. So I'm going to do our double knot again here and tie it down. Maybe not quite so hard this time. And then do it again because there we go. Pull, but not too hard. Now what's great is what we want to do is squish these back together so that they hide our little ring here. And then we can take those ends and just trim those off to be the same length as our as the rest of our fringe. Don't even have to try and there. There we go. We can just cut it right off. So now we've got our hanging ring attached. We just want to make sure again, uh, you know, of course, at this point, we'd probably have our whole ring full, but we just want to make sure to fill in that gap so that it isn't isn't real obvious from the front side. Of course, our starch would make those stand up, so that would hide it as well. So I think I saw a question pop up really quick. Uh, yeah, Susan said it was a surgeon's knot, and I know it ah. is a granny knot, so. Well, there you go. All right, well, now I feel extra fancy. <laughs> but yeah, um, whatever you want to call it. And if you are a professional knot maker, I'm sure you can probably come up with one that's even better, but that should hold it pretty well. And like I say, we're going to be doing glue along the back here anyway, so that'll help hold it down just a little bit more. But if you wanted to take maybe some thread, like some polyester thread or something, um, a little bit stronger than that yarn, like I say, especially if you're putting a heavy mirror on here, then I would recommend that. Um, just because you don't, you don't want that yarn to break and your beautiful mirror to fall to the floor and break. So that is all the way through step three. So the let, or excuse me, step two, the last step, step three, is use the hot glue gun and glue sticks, glue mirror to the back of the hoop, ensuring the hanging ring is still accessible and the mirror is very secure. So that's something to be sure of as well. Hot glue um, is lovely. All these really strong glues are lovely because they tend to act really fast, but I would really recommend you let this sit overnight before, um, before you try and hang it on the wall. You don't want to hang this too soon. And again, have the whole thing come crashing down. So do take your time with that. So I've got my mirror here. You can see I put my tape over so you don't have to look at my ceiling. <laughs> but we're going to want to uh, glue it, you know, facing down anyway. So again, you want to make sure that your ring is facing down, you know, so you've got those little knots on the side where you want them to be and that your hanging ring is up. You can see here how it's just sort of over. Let me see if I can pick that up. It's just sort of over the edge of the hoop a little bit there. So we really keep that right up above because we want an even edge here to glue our mirror to. But once it's glued, it is going to be together. So if you've chosen not to starch, you might want to give those all those tassels just another little strong tug to make sure they're just where you want them. Make sure they're all laying nice and flat and at the same place. And then you go ahead and glue it all together. I get my little yarn scraps out of the way here. They're right where I need to be. And then I've got my 10 inch mirror here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the paper off on the tape on the other side because I don't want to actually glue that to my mirror. That would be terrible. There we are. And then I'm just going to set it right here and I'm going to bring in my hot glue gun. So again, if you can, I would recommend getting a clear glue. That's always just going to be the most versatile, but I happen to have pink glue and we're using pink yarn. So that's what I'll use today. So then it says we just run a line of glue. Let's see, it is warm. Might need to get it started a little bit. You know how hot glue is. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. So I'm just going to pump a little line of glue right along there, right along the edge of the yarn. We want to glue to the yarn more so than the brass ring. The brass ring should definitely be covered. You can see I'm bringing that line right underneath the hanging ring there. So we're going to get, well, let's put a little extra there. I'm going to do a little extra dab right on that hanging ring. So it will, because I know I've got pink, pink glue, so I'm not too worried about that. But I just want that hanging ring to be really, really secure. And you know what? I think doing it like this, like hair, even if you didn't put faces, you could still put a mirror on there 
How fun is that, right? Then it's like you're wearing the little wig. There we go. Get that on there, a little spot I missed. I'll put my glue gun back here to the side. And then once I do this, I can't really mess with it anymore. So were there any other questions? We do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, Gail asks, I don't have the template in front of me, but uh, to do this, is it necessary to use spray, start, start, spray starch? And if so, can it dry without using an iron? Um, I'm so sorry, Lillian, you cut out just a little bit there, but I think, were you asking, can you do it without an iron? Uh, can you dry the spray starch without using an iron? Yes, you can absolutely just let it air dry. Just make sure you've combed it out the way, right the way you want it and then walk away. Let it dry completely before you futz with it again. Um, it'll take a couple hours. It might even take longer with this much yarn, but you definitely, you don't have to do it with an iron. It's just, it's a lot quicker. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here before our glue sets. But we just wanna take our time, let me move this up a little bit, and really line it up with the ring. There we go. I'll drop that right in place. I'm gonna give that just a little bit of pressure. Now I don't want that glue to seep through, seep through to the other side, so I don't wanna put necessarily anything heavy on here, but I do want to apply just enough pressure to really get it to stick. But once that's done, then I would walk away and let it sit for probably, like I say, at least 24 hours, probably overnight at the very least, before I tried to pick it up and hang it anywhere. Um, but since, we don't have to follow the rules. This is just our example. I don't know what I did with my little piece of paper for covering the mirror, but so you're going to have to, <laughs> there I am, and there's my ceiling, and there's my phone that you are watching me through for a little more uh, background than you expected to see for this class. But you can see right there, we've got our ring of yarn right on our mirror, and that brass ring really is hidden altogether. So I'm gonna turn that over again here so you don't have to look at my basement ceiling anymore. But then I would say, I would just go ahead and let this sit. And at this point, I think this is a really fun way to finish it off because like I say, then it's like a little, almost like a little wig that you're wearing every time you look in the mirror. <clears throat> so were there any other questions that I could possibly maybe demo here with my hands? Um, I only glued halfway because I only went halfway around with the yarn. Um, if I were, you know, if this, if I'd gone all the way around with the yarn, I would have glued all the way around with the yarn as well. Um, but I only have yarn on half my project right now. So I don't know how well the glue would stick to the brass ring. And I would probably not want to use the pink stuff right there. So that's where I would definitely want to use the, uh, the clear glue. This one is just our little demo one. So it didn't quite get finished, but we only have an hour. So were there any other questions I could answer? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, there's a question from Miriam asking, does the hoop have an opening where you can add beads in between? It might be nice as a necklace. Ooh, that would be really cool. Um, unfortunately, this hoop does not, but there are some really, really cool things over in the jewelry aisle. Um, you know, you go into Michael's and you've got to explore all the aisles, not just the yarn aisle and, you know, everything. Um, but there are some really, uh, really fun things in the jewelry Aisle. There are basically necklaces made to be worn like that. And you could absolutely use this technique on those as well. Um, you could even use this technique on hoop earrings for making really fun, just fringed hoop earrings. Um, anything you can think of, really. If there's an opening you can tie the yarn on, you can make it. So let's go ahead and come back to the other camera here. There we go. Just always like to wait to move that so nobody gets seasick. Uh, were there any last questions I could answer for anybody? We have lots of thank yous and great okay. project. Oh, good. Um, yeah, you could use um, your little, the keychains you were saying as the necklace idea as well. Absolutely, yeah, that would be really fun. Um, you know, you can make tiny little, like a little pendant, um, all kinds of really fun things, really the sky's the limit. This knotting technique is really popular across crafts. So wherever you can knot that yarn, you can feel free. All right, so if that, is that our, I don't want to leave anybody's questions unanswered. I know it's seven o'clock. I think you've got them all. Yep. Okay, great. Well, I would hold it up, but that would be really difficult. You'd be seeing all these bright lights. So <laughs> we've seen it and you've got your um, instructions. Again, I believe those were probably linked in the chat. Um, if not, they came with your, um, with your class invitation. And it is, I, 
my instruction slipped away. What is the full name of the craft again, Lillian? It's Reflected Fringe Hoop? That's right. You got a bang Okay, on. woo, I remembered it. All right, so in case you need to look it up, if you're watching this at a later time, um, you know, and you need to find that pattern separately, it is available on your inspirations, Reflected Fringe Hoop. So that's what you need to look for. So other than that, I think we're done. So just want to say thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I hope you enjoyed this craft. It is made once again with Lily Sugar and Cream. And it is very fun and full of possibilities. Thanks so much, Tamara. And thanks for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag Make with Michaels and hashtag Younspirations. And just a reminder, as Tamara said, you can find more classes at michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody.